Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I just wanted to shoot a quick one really to give you, well, not so quick, but I wanted to go through some of the tips and advice I would give to you if you're looking to do the West Highland Way this, uh, this spring, this summer. Um, it's a fantastic 97 mile walk from Mulgai, which is an outer suburb of Glasgow, going all the way up into the Scottish Highlands, uh, up to Fort William. Um, now it's a bit of a mixed terrain really, you're going to be walking along Loch Lomond, you're going to be walking into the Highlands through Glencoe, um, and the great thing about the West Highland Way is the, um, the difference really in, in the terrain and um, the surrounding sort of change every single day. Um, you can be walking through the woods, you can be walking by Loch Lomond, you can be walking through the mountains. And, and it's the, it, the scenery changes very, very quickly, day by day, and that's what makes it such a fantastic walk. Um, now, 30,000 people a year do this walk, so you're not gonna be alone. Um, when I did it for the first time in August 2019, I've done it twice. Um, you know, I was, it was very busy, a lot of international travelers, perhaps not so much this year, so it could be a fantastic time of year to do it. Um, so there's gonna be, um, not so many people probably on it this year, but but it's, as I say, it's, it's a great, great trail. And I just really wanted to go through some of the, the tips that I would give you. So this is gonna take a, a few minutes probably because I wanted to really give you, based on the two times that I've done it, the best, the best sort of guidance really, the best advice. And there's a lot of videos out there which are fantastic. Um, so the first bit of advice I would give you is to watch different videos to see people's past itineraries. So you can watch my, my two videos of when I did it in 2019 and when I did it last summer as well. So uh, by watching these videos, you can see the, you can basically copy my itinerary, the exact plan that I did. Um, but you can watch, just go onto YouTube and there are hundreds of videos on there that people have done it. And then that, that can help you with your preparation. Uh, I use videos all the time for maybe planning a wild camp or um, going on a long distance trek but that's the first bit of advice I would give you is to go on YouTube and watch some videos you can see the different terrain you can see the fantastic experience that you're going to have um, I would seriously recommend to do that my second tip so these aren't in any particular order but if you are wild camping definitely go and wild camp by the Bridge of Orkey um, that's a fantastic place to wild camp um, it's right by the River Orkey I think it's when you come out of Tindrum towards the latter stages of the West Highland Way. Um, you can either stay at the Bridge of Orkey Hotel or you can sort of wild camp. There's a designated wild camping spot by the by the Bridge of Orkey, right by the bridge. Um, it can get quite quite busy there. Uh, and it, depending on the time of year you're going, I'll talk about midges later. It, it, there, there are midges about there, so, um, so I'll talk about the best times to go. But if you are wild camping, definitely put that in your itinerary to wild camp there because it's a fantastic place. There's a great water source by the side of you and, and you can go to sleep with the sound of the river walkie uh, in the background. It's fantastic. So my third tip would be to actually stay in Mulgai for one night. So the two times that I've done it, I've stayed in the Premier Inn and I really like when I get to the trailhead, the start of a trail, uh, to stay in uh, stay in the town for, for one night. Um, and really just because it you sort of soak up the atmosphere and there's people milling about. And Mole Guy is a really, really lovely outer suburb of Glasgow. Uh, it's got a park, it's got uh, Waitrose, uh, it's got M&S, if you're familiar with those grocery stores in the UK. So it's got everything you need if you need to you know, get some supplies at last minute. But um, it's a nice little place. You know, you get the train, you, you go from sort of Glasgow Central, 20 minutes to, to Mole Guy. So it's really easy to get there. It's about three pounds a ticket for the train but uh, yeah I just just recommend not to not to sort of rush off and start just sort of mill about soak up the atmosphere take some pictures get some video at Mole Guy it's a really nice place um, so tip number four would be to video your experience just like I've done or every, anyone else has done take a take a camera and video everything take obviously take photos but um, the nice thing is that I, I when I did it in 2019 I can look I can look back on that any time and, and see how I got on and and it's definitely worth doing it and then put it up onto YouTube it helps somebody else out that's uh, planning to do the West Highland Way tip number five take hiking poles take walking poles um, it's going to be tough. It's a long distance trail. Um, it, it's brutally challenging. I might put some clips up here of when I was walking from the Bridge of Walkey to Kinloch Leven uh, through, the, through the highlands, through the mountains. Uh, it, it was pretty brutal. I don't think I actually took any poles on that, on that one, on, on that 
first attempt. Um, but I'd really recommend to do it. It takes the pressure off your knees. You know, you're gonna be walking on sort of hard military stone roads a lot of the time, um, certainly in the, in the latter stages. Um, there's a real brutal stage from uh, the Inversnade Hotel along Loch uh, Lomond to the end of the lock, which is be scrambling over boulders and rocks. Probably don't need your poles for that uh, section. Might do, but you're literally gonna be scrambling along that section. It takes a couple of hours to do. It's, it's brutally challenging. And then my tip leading on to that would actually be, because from, from the north of the north side of Loch Lomond, I walked another five miles, I think, to, um, to Banglas campsite. Now, if you're a little bit tired after that stretch, there is the option to get a ferry uh, across to Arduli, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but you, there's a campsite there towards the end of Loch Lomond, basically, right at the end. So uh, there, there is an option, and when you get to that point, there is a big sign and a phone number, and it might be worth just, I think it actually has the ferry times as well. So if not, then go on to Banglass campsite. It's a fantastic campsite. It's got every single facility you can imagine. It's got a shop, it's got wash and dry facilities, it's got a bar, it's got some food. Uh, I went in the COVID time last, um, last July and I was still able to get take uh, still able to get food and stuff that's when the restrictions had eased but uh, but um, but yeah but, but go back to the point definitely take walking poles that they'll massively help you out tip number six stay in Drimmen uh, so on the first day I think most people walk from Mulgai to Drimmen which is about 30 miles 12 30 miles um, it's a nice nice little uh, first day it's pretty pretty easy going pretty flat some really nice views um, I stayed at the Kip in the Church bunkhouse and I really highly recommend that you go and stay there um, so basically because they, they, they need a little bit of uh, all these places that have been closed down they, they need some help from us and um, I think it'd be, it's, it's a really good uh, nice option to stay in Driven and you've also got Scottish, Scotland's oldest oldest pub in, in, the, in the town centre and that's where the uh, now there's another trail, um, the Rob Roy Way starts as well. So um, I'd recommend to stay in Drummond. I didn't do that. The, the first time I went in 2019, I stayed at a campsite, Drummond, Drummond Camping, so there's a really good option there. But I actually, the second time last July, the second time last July, I walked on to um, to, to Drummond Town itself and I stayed at the Kip in the Church bunkhouse, which was actually advertised on the walk and I didn't know about it and I called them up and I stayed there for like, I think about 30 quid or something, but I got a bed. I was nobody staying there at the time. Uh, but it's, it really sort of helps these places out um, in terms of recovering from COVID and stuff. So, um, so I'd highly recommend to, to stay in Drimmen. There's lots of other places, but I stayed at the Kip in the church and I had a fantastic experience there. Uh, you know, it's very, very comfortable. It was warm. I got a breakfast in the morning, and um, yeah, highly recommend it. And you can go into town uh, if you stay there and get get some tweet at that pub. I can't remember the name, but but it was great. Tip number eight. Uh, so there's a new uh, section which helps you to divert, not go over Conic Hill. So you can take a shortcut down the road to Balmahar. Don't do that. Go over Conic Hill. Um, you'll, you'll see. I might be able to put that clip in this actually to show you, but. Um, Highly recommend you go to obviously take the route up, the high route up over Conic Hill, especially if it's a fantastic day. The second time I went last summer, it was terrible weather, um, but I still went up and it was still a great experience going up there. Um, so yeah, definitely go over, 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 over um, don't take the short route uh, to Balmahar, take the long route over Conic Hill. Uh, tip number nine, stay at Salafi Bay campsite. So on the second night, I walked from Drimmen to Solaki Bay. Um, so this is where you can actually book online, book a, like a book a semi wild camp pitch right by the lock. It's fantastic. Um, there is sort of um, a tap and then a compost toilet there. It's pretty basic, but but it's a nice place to camp by the lock. Um, and uh, you know, I highly recommend you that you, that you uh, book, on, book there. I think it's like twelve quid for a pitch or something. So just go onto their website, Google Solaki Bay campsite, and you. So moving on, tip number 10. Um, no, we won't do that one actually. Um, tip number 11, don't take too much food. There's a lot of options on the route. Um, in Drimmen, there's a, I think there's like a, a convenience store there so you can get you can get supplied there. Balmaha, there's a store there. Um, I'm not so sure, not so sure there's much on from Balmaha to Banglass campsite, but um, 
but you can pretty much supply if you're doing this this trip in six days you can get you know get what you need really uh, as I say the campsites all offer sort of uh, food and things like that you might need um, I mean at Glencoe even at, um, uh, if you're doing the stretch from Bridge of Walker to Kinloch Leven you'll come across Glencoe Mountain Resort and get food there as well and I remember having a fish and chips there which was fantastic Tindrum as well Tindrum has got um, something called the Green Welly store if you know the West Highland way it's pretty overpriced <laughs> so I don't recommend um, don't really recommend that place really um, but it, yeah it's a convenient it's a, it's a fantastic fish and chip shop again in Tindrum uh, so there's, there's definitely plenty of stuff so don't take too much food just take what you think you need and do your research but there's lots of convenience stores on route number 12 training so this is a long distance hike and it's tough it's, you know, it's just under shy of 100 miles so you need to train for it um, you know, I'd recommend doing squats or um, you know doing two days of sort of nine or ten miles with maybe a pack on your back uh, do some running uh, make sure you, you've trained for this walk because I didn't feel too fit on the last time I, I did this and I, I, I didn't think I trained enough for it um, so I'd highly recommend that you uh, put it through. so um, so tip number 13 foot care so you're doing a hundred miles it's it's pretty brutal um, you're gonna be walking along military stone roads you need to take care of your feet now I wear trail runners I wear uh, ultra lone peak 4.0 uh, mids I've also got a pair of just the ones that are, are without mids ultra are fantastic if you're looking to get some footwear uh, I, I highly recommend them but in terms of looking after your feet I would take three pairs of clean socks I'd highly recommend Bridgedale socks um, I'll put a link in, in the description below there's a link to um, some of the products I use for foot care so there's a, there's like a, an after cream as well that I apply at night um, you know keep your feet dry during the day take your shoes and socks off air your feet um, just 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 do your work on your foot care and um, that helps to minimize any chance of blisters obviously take the compede with you uh, but three pairs of socks change them every day uh, try and not get your feet wet because uh, I've suffered with that on the Great Glen Way which you might have seen on my uh, I put a card up to the Great Glen Way where I had to walk through I walked through a pool of water and it ruined my walk I had to come home because I got loads of blisters so really really take care of your feet uh, so tip number 14 getting near the end now so waterproofs so I've now just got a Rab uh, Downpour Plus waterproof jacket definitely take a poncho on the West Highland Way Invest in some decent waterproofs. Uh, there's a lot of options out there. I highly recommend brands like Berghaus, Rab. Um, you know, just make sure that you've got you're, you're fully waterproofed out because you're going to Scotland. It, it, it gets very wet there, as it does in all of the United Kingdom. But even in the middle of summer, you know, you can be rained on all day. So you don't want to be too wet, but you just want to invest in some decent waterproofs. Tip number 15. I would say go in May, early May or September, late September to avoid the midges. So it wasn't so bad when I went in August, but there, there, there are clusters and clouds of them at places like the Bridge of Orkey. Um, get something called Avon Skin So Soft. It works an absolute treat in, in, um, in resisting them and getting rid of them. Um, you, you can't really avoid them. Take some bike cream as well. I didn't take bike cream and I regretted that. Take some of that. Um, you're not going to be able to avoid them, but you're definitely going to do, do very well to avoid them if you go in sort of early May or late September. Um, but they're not as bad as everyone makes out or what you've read online. It's not that bad. Um, I had someone who I knew from who I knew was from Scotland and uh, she said uh, what did she say um, that there was a third hatching or something it's going to be horrendous and it really wasn't that bad it wasn't it wasn't as bad they, they, they do sort of cluster at campsites um, but they're not it's not going to be as bad as you as you read or you think it's going to be it really isn't just take a midge net obviously I've got links I've got links below to, to what I recommend for Scotland in terms of midges and stuff so um, but, but don't worry too much about it if you really don't want to obviously come across them go start of may or late september maybe early october and finally tip number 16 take a water filter so i use a soya mini water filter it's fantastic when i went in august 2019 when i did the stretch from inverstade hotel to uh, Benglass campsite i ran out of water and i needed to fill up if i hadn't had the water filter i would have god i don't know uh, fantastic piece of equipment um, you must get a water filter 
uh, for this walk. So guys, I hope that's uh, hope that's helped you if you're planning to do the West Highland Way this spring or summer. Very popular trail. It's absolutely fantastic. It really, really is the the alternating of the of the surroundings and what you see just changes every single day. First day it's pretty flat, some fantastic views. Second day you're walking around a lock. Uh, third day you're if you're doing it in six days, of course. Um, third day you're walking up into the highlands, and fourth day you get into the mountains, and and, and the change of scenery over a short short uh, period of time is just what makes this trail so wonderful. Um, and yeah, so I hope those I hope that sort of helps you. If you've got any questions, obviously, just just pop a comment below, um, and and I'll try to help you out. As I say, I've done this trail twice, so I've got a little bit of experience with it. But I hope those tips. Uh, give you some sort of practical advice uh, of how to um, how to go about this trip so so please hit the uh, hit the like button don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and I'll be doing some more videos like this but definitely going to be hopefully getting out into the Peak District um, uh, in sort of mid-April do some wild camping and bring you some fantastic videos of what the uh, of what the UK has to offer uh, so I look forward to seeing you soon